Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with a Mighty Jingles. And I swear I hadn't actually been planning to do nothing but Russian stuff in the week after coming back from Russia, with the obvious exception of the Far Cry 5 video yesterday, but, well, things just seem to be working out this way. Today's battle is courtesy of Weaklings, and he's going to be driving for us the Soviet Tier 9 medium tank, the T-54. The original Soviet Tier 9 medium tank, and some say still the best. It's been a long time, of course, since this was the only Soviet Tier 9 medium tank in the game, but once upon a time, this was the top tier Soviet medium tank. The medium tanks didn't go any higher than this. There were no Tier 10 mediums. In fact, the only Tier 10 tanks that existed in the game were the Tier 10 heavies, and there were only two of those, the IS-7 and the Mouse. Back in those days, the T-54 had earned itself the nickname the UFO, and it wasn't because of the saucer-shaped turret. This was not only the highest tier Soviet medium tank, it was also the fastest tank in World of Tanks. A little bit too fast for the World of Tanks fledgling servers that couldn't really quite keep up with just how quick this tank went. And trying to hit a T-54 moving at full speed was next to impossible, because it would just kind of teleport around the battlefield. And that's how it earned itself the nickname UFO, although hardly anybody still calls it that. Those days are, of course, long gone, and there's plenty of competition for the title of best tier 9 medium tank these days, but the T-54 is still pretty good. Weaklings in position, waiting for his first victim, and he's not going to have to wait too long, as a Mark 7 Centurion comes around the corner, blunders into his gun sights, and bounces his return shot off Weakling's very tough turret. Technically, this is a far from ideal situation for a T-54 to be in. He's on with a 100mm gun that's rapid firing, but doesn't have great alpha damage. The Centurion, on the other hand, has a 105mm gun. Has lower damage per minute and longer reload, but higher alpha damage. And when you're trading like this, when you're only able to get a shot off at the Centurion when he's ready and reloaded, Assuming all other factors are equal, the Centurion's going to win the trade, because he just does more damage with each shot. That, of course, is assuming that everything else is equal. And this is where individual skill comes in. And you'll see what I'm talking about when the Centurion reloads and decides he's going to come out and try his luck again. The T-54 has a very tough turret. The upper glacis is pretty good. Lower glacis, not so much, but angling up at this kind of angle... He's denying any shots at his lower glacis. Any shots into his side, he's just going to get eaten up by his tracks. Or the Centurion's going to be forced to derp one once again into his turret. And once again, the Centurion coming out, exposing his side armour, which is very easy to penetrate, exposing his lower glacis, which is very easy to penetrate, and getting punished for doing it. Weaklings? Not so much. None of these are advanced tactics, by the way. This is all fairly basic stuff but you'd be appalled at just how often I cover these basic World of Tanks concepts, and in the comments there's always somebody who had no idea. You have to bear in mind that the average win rate in World of Tanks is 48%. It's not 50%, some battles end in draws. 48% win rating, that's the average. 50% of the World of Tanks player base are worse than that. <laughs> that's why it's an average. So, yeah, you're going to have to forgive me if I do keep going over these basic concepts every now and then. Just planting seeds, you never know where they're going to take root. Oh, there's that AMX again. Well, while everybody's busy kicking this guy to death, pay attention to the map. You could be forgiven for thinking that this was your classic lemming train, with everybody heading around the northwestern corner. That's not actually the case. There were plenty of tanks on the team that headed over to the eastern flank. The only problem is, they're almost all dead. Oh, there's the Centurion again, and nope, he still doesn't appear to have learned his lesson. Well, you never know. Maybe if he repeats the same mistake often enough, eventually he'll get a different result. Yeah, probably not. Right, well, Weaklings has decided he's going to take the fight to him. The first thing he's going to do is troll him into shooting early and bouncing off his turrets. And now that the Centurion is reloading, it's perfectly safe. Again, that's kind of unlucky. I mean, the Centurion turned to angle just in time. That shot was aimed at his lower glacis, but instead it hit his inside drive wheel, and he's kind of unlucky that it didn't penetrate all the way through and do some damage as well, but all it ended up doing was immobilizing him. And there's an STA-2 coming up 
to give him some backup. So he turns to deal with this T28 prototype. First shot, hits a patch of rough ground, gun barrel jerks up, and it goes high. But the second shot, you see what he did there? There was no real need to immobilize the T28 prototype. It's an incredibly slow machine. It was never going to escape alive. But because he immobilized it while doing damage, any subsequent damage done to it counts as spotting or tracking damage, and Weaklings gets a share of the credits for it. Meanwhile, the situation over on the eastern end of the map has gone from bad to absolutely terrible. The team are losing three kills to seven, and they have enemy tanks running riot in their base. And Weakling seems to be the only person on the team who's capable of finding two shits to give about it. But right before... well, we'll finish watching him deal with this AMX 1357, but there's something else going on on the minimap that I want to draw your attention to once he's finished dealing with this guy. Weakling's team do still have one surviving artillery. They've lost the M12 because he did the typical artillery thing and just sat at the back of the base while it was being overrun by the enemy team. But they still have an M53 alive. Can you see him? Don't look at the base, he's not there. <laughs> he's up here. <laughs> yes, really. I'm not, I'm not really sure what to think about this. <laughs> well, first of all, balls of steel for that M53 driver. He's certainly got far bigger balls than the four heavy tanks who are all hiding behind him. <laughs> See ya. As he, well, he's got a T29 coming around one corner and an STA2 coming around the other corner. While all of these heavies just sit there and watch. And it's the STA2 who's actually going to kill him. But while that was undoubtedly not the smartest position on the map to be in in artillery, there are far more sensible places you could have evacuated to when the base was being overrun and the M12 got killed. But at the same time, you've got to respect the size of his balls. <laughs> Oh, was that the Centurion just managed to get a shot into the side of Weakling's T-54? And still do no damage. <laughs> he's not been having a very good game, has he? Still, he's at least in good company because there are plenty of people in this battle who have not been having a very good game. Unfortunately, the majority are on Weakling's team. They're losing four kills to nine. And the tank destroyer up there, who just got slaughtered by that AMX 1390, is not very happy about it. And he's going to let the team know in no uncertain terms in chat. And the M12 artillery player isn't going to take any of that, and responds by telling him, well, you camp like a retard, you die like a retard, which I initially thought was a little harsh. But, well, I kind of owe that M12 artillery player a bit of an apology, and I'll show you why. Once again, we're going to wind the clock back a little, and have a look at the relative positions of the two tanks remaining defending the base. This is the M12, and several hundred metres further back, that's the UDES-03. At first, because, well, we've all seen this sort of thing happen far too often before, I thought the M12 was going to suicide with a cliff dive. But that is definitely not the case. <laughs> he just charged and shotgunned the SU-12244. So, under the circumstances, having reviewed all of the available evidence, I think that if there's anybody on the team who's actually completely justified in telling that UDES-3 to stop whining like a little bitch <laughs> and man up and fight, it's that M12 driver. I have to admit, it doesn't happen too often, but I am always quite surprised when an artillery player like that M12 and that M53 exceed my very low expectations. So, well done to both of them. Anyway, back to the battle. That AMX 1390 was not the only tank rushing the base. There's this T-34-100 and behind him an SU-100M1. And there's not really a lot of available cover here. Well, actually, there is. There's the T-34-100. Another expert play there from Weaklings. Uh, oh, he's actually taking some damage from the enemy artillery, but, yeah, merely a scratch. And... gotcha. Who's next? It's ironic... I don't know if you'd noticed, if you'd been paying attention to chat, but while Weaklings and the LTG were coming back here to save the team from certain defeat, the heavy tanks, all four of them, <laughs> back over here on the northwest corner, were all pinging the map and begging for help. You've got to wonder sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now, do you remember that Centurion was having a bad day? It's about to get a lot worse. And there's quite a lot that's going to happen here in a short space of time. The first thing that happens is Weaklings actually bounces a shot from the LTG on his own team. Then bounces a shot from the Centurion, who 
continues to fail to do any damage to him, and then focuses on the VK4503. And the reason he did that, of course, was he can quite easily outmaneuver the VK4503, but the Centurion potentially at least had the maneuverability and mobility to be a threat. Target priority in World of Tanks. First and foremost, shoot at targets that you can actually kill. Like that guy, for example. Secondly, shoot at targets that are doing their level best to kill you. And then, and only then, go after everything else. Now, that T-29 may just be a Tier 7 heavy tank facing a Tier 9 medium tank, but he's in a perfect hold-down position behind the wreck of a dead tank. And while a depressingly large amount of T-54 players will simply press the 2 key, load the gold, and then attempt to snipe his commander's hatch, when you have this kind of speed maneuverability, there are far better ways to deal with hold-down heavies. First, though, he's going to have to deal with another enemy heavy tank, the Lerva. And once again, that's a mighty convenient wreck, just sitting there, waiting to provide him with a couple of extra metres of frontal armour. And there's kill number eight for the Radley Walters medal. There's still a Pools medal up for grabs, though, but he's going to need to secure another two kills. Can he get round here in time? No, he cannot kill the T-29, which was his original objective. There are still two artillery in play. Oh, and there's one of them, and that one just missed. Aims up for the return shot, and wow, he's actually missed one. Now, while the T-54's 100mm gun does not actually have the alpha damage to guarantee a one-shot kill of enemy artillery, unless you load the high explosive and you're lucky enough to actually penetrate, it does reload quickly enough that you can finish them off, providing you can keep them in your sights, should you require additional shots at target. And with just one enemy vehicle remaining, and any competition on the rest of his team struggling to catch up, this is a guaranteed pools medal, with 10 kills for weaklings in the T-54 Soviet Tier 9 medium tank. The original, and some say still the best. That's over 6,000 damage done to go with his pools medal and 10 kills, and the steel wall medal with nearly 3,000 damage blocked by his armour most of which we could lay squarely at the door of that Centurion Mark VII, who didn't actually have that bad of a game. He managed to do over 2,000 damage, which isn't terrible, but it's kind of ironic that of all of the tanks on Weakling's team, the one tank that he absolutely, definitely, desperately needed to do some damage to <laughs> was Weakling's T-54. The one tank he took more shots at than any other and the only tank that he shot at that he was not actually able to do some damage to was the tank on the enemy team that carried that match with 10 kills, pools medal, and over 6,000 damage done. Sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes you really have to wonder why you bother. <laughs> oh well, better luck next time. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you, Weaklings, for sending that one in, and I think your team should thank you as well, because without your colossal carry there, they would certainly have lost. Everybody else, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.